Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're going to look at a mid-1980s Yamaha R2000. This was brought to me by a viewer of the channel, and uh, there are a couple of complaints. Just an overall decline in performance, and the tuner no longer remembers its stations. So those are the two main points that we need to take care of. Also, we'll be exploring various aspects of the machine and servicing and replacement of critical capacitors in the regulated power supply. Now, this is a, was a fairly top-end model in its day. We'll go inside and I'll show you all the key points to be aware of uh, when looking at these, perhaps one for purchase or from the aspects of repairing it. So let's get the top off. So when you get inside one of these things, you're greeted with a plethora of stuff. I'm just going to go over what all this stuff is and the importance of it. Now, most notably, is when you get over here, you've got discrete output transistors here, which is nice. Uh, but you do have the famous voltage amplifier IC, which is the SDK3156. If you encounter one of these with blown output transistors, this has very likely been injured. And so, because there are no genuines available, you either have to hope that somebody's making a discrete replacement or simply toss out the probability of repairing the amplifier. Because fixing the amplifier output stage itself is very simple. It's just a matter of releasing these two screws, unplugging these sections here, and the entire heatsink comes out for service. It's really quite nice. Uh, but without that STK device, uh, it's a hit or a miss whether you're going to blow up the new amp or not and I really don't recommend doing that. So, uh, key aspects here to look at. Let me pull this off the camera mount. Things are going to get shaky. I apologize for that. But that's just how it is. Um, so, for the tuner memory, we have this lovely crustomatic uh, nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride, I forget. Uh, that needs to be changed out. The potentiometer for the uh, power output there or signal strength meter will need to be cleaned if not replaced. And then down here is your regulated power supply, uh, as of course denoted on the board. And there is yet another STK, uh, your X processor, which I believe is, uh, I don't, re well actually, I don't remember whether this is solely a power supply thing or whether this is a preamp processor thing. But things die. Uh, so we'll be checking all of these capacitors down in here. And since this has the beginnings of the purple Matsushita things, you want to bend over some of these ones and take a look down at them and make sure that the leads aren't crusty. Like this 47 microfarad here, you can see that there's some uh, disgusting green crud on the lead coming out there. It's almost always the negative lead, so that will need to be changed. All of those will need to be changed. Not changing those is a bad idea. Uh, but the other manufacturers there, like the little Cornell Dubliers and the Nishikons down here, they usually don't die very often. And then there's just general soldering that needs to be done. The tuners in these are fairly stable and drift free. And then it's chemically treating all those switches and controls, which is a bit of a chore on this uh, because of obviously where they're located. But we have to pull this board up in order to change the battery, so therefore uh, those will be more accessible. So let me take the bottom cover off and show you what you're looking at as far as soldering. Alright, so with the bottom off, you see that for the most part, this was by this time Yamaha had gotten into large monolithic construction. And this is where the wave soldering starts to fall off. And I don't know if you can see it, but just from my vantage point, just a little to the right of the center of your screen, you should see some discoloration on the board there. And that's going to be where the power supply regulators are. And if we come down here and we zoom in a little bit, assuming that the camera will focus, we see that there's... Uh, focus. Come on some crusty looking solder there. 
Uh, likewise, when we go over here, it's not great either. And then also the SDKs will need to be resoldered. Almost always it's right at the end where they break free. And here's the one for the amplifier. And if we zoom way in here, assuming it will focus, we can see the ring around the lead there. Come on, really? Really? Oh, anyways. Bad soldering there that needs to be taken care of. There you go. You can see it a little better there. All those rings around those leads. Got to take care of that. And for God's sake, don't short the leads together and don't lose the little suppression capacitors there. If you take those out, the amplifier will oscillate and it will be game over. Uh, more ICs back here to resolder. Connectors to resolder. Uh, here's the ones for the amplifier, which uh, not all that great a shape. But yeah, this is all stuff you got to take care of as part of the service process. So I'll definitely be doing that. And I'm not going to make this a big, lengthy, boring, hey, watch me do all this crap. I'm pretty much going to progress through it. The biggest thing that we are going to go over, though, is the replacement of the memory battery, which has very likely trashed the circuit board uh, as a function of it leaking everywhere. So. I think the first thing I'm going to do, since I already know this powers up and it runs, uh, is take care of the memory problem because that board really needs to come out and you'll see how ugly it looks once it is. Okay, so the fun part here is detaching all of this. Now these, you may wish to mark them, you don't have to mark them, I would, but you can just leave them attached to the wire bundles and they'll kind of go where they want to go, which is really what you want. So I'm just going to unplug these. Now there are ones here. Okay, they are labeled, so already. It's been a while since I disassembled one of these. And that one is tied in there, so I am going to have to cut that zip tie. See if we can shed a little more light on this. I know the lighting sucks, but until I get some different arrangements in here, that's how it's going to be. Okay, got number 14, number 15. Come on out. And it's not all releasable. You're going to have a little bit to mess with here. So there's a screw down here. There's one here. There's one here. Go ahead and release those. I'm really concerned about the damage to this board, but we won't be able to see that until we get everything up. And then we have to take care of the ribbon cables that are along the back that are black there. Uh, they are prone to breakage too, which you really don't want. So we're going to get this up and tilt it. And you can see that beautiful battery crust here at the lower part of your screen. Oh yeah, that's just lovely. You can see the bubbling and the effect there and damage to the board. Okay, so uh, obviously the next thing we're going to have to do is remove the battery. Let me get this into a better point for the camera. Get my solder wick. Got a hot iron. Yeah, let's go ahead and remove this and then see what terrible things have occurred as a function of this. Now, unlike most of my videos that I'm doing before business hours, this one's actually being done during business hours. So the phone rings or something, I'm going to have to stop and get it. Okay, so there's our lovely looking battery there. So 3.6 volt, 50 milliamp hours. Uh, I suppose you could use a super capacitor, 
but you can still get these. These are everywhere. Um, let me show you its replacement real quick. Yeah, this was just something I bought on eBay. It's a 80 milliamp hour. Ooh, also called a RAM battery. RAM memory battery. Uh, this seller is also known uh, for selling legitimate Japanese transistors. And they're here in Hemet, California, so it's nice that the stuff gets here real fast. But anyway, here's the memory battery. As you can see, it's very similar to the old one, except that it's not a crusty mess. So we're going to clean the board off. Let's take a look at what it looks like top side. Kind of scary there. I'm going to go ahead and get a scrapey scrapey. As much of that garbage off there as I can. And we'll get a brush. Assuming I can find one. Here we go. Out comes the uh, isopropanol, and we're just going to clean, 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 clean. The reason why you want to clean this so vigorously is because you don't want any of that corrosive goop left behind because it will mess with the tiny little voltages that operate the display and the microprocessor that you don't want. Okie dokie. Still got some pretty fair board damage there, but it is what it is. Flip this up, and you can see the nasty corrosive effects of the, the battery goo. Yum O. And it's hard to tell on camera, but this foil trace here has been eaten. The shiny stuff has completely gone away, and I bet if I take an ohmmeter to it, I won't get much of anything. So we're going to have to repair that trace. Let's just do a quick test. And if I come from here to here, we get continuity. But if I come from here to here, no, we still get continuity. It looks like it's dead, but it's there. And then that's still alive. I probably am still going to scrape that away and clean it up. Run some solder down there so it doesn't get worse. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto and scrape away all the crusties here. Stuff attacks the copper. Very corrosive. It's good that there's still shiny stuff underneath because that tells me that the metal is still conductive. There are instances where this will completely get eaten away and you'll lose continuity, which is why I checked it with a meter. These lines here that like are totally black, it just worries me. But once you get the the nasties away, 
There's still pretty looking metal underneath there. Let's see, let's wipe that clean again. Okay. I can see enough of this now. That I'm not too terribly worried about it. Uh, there is one spot here on this board, which I'm just going to check again. Okay. That's all right. And then let's check here. Yep. And let's check here. Uh-huh. All right, those are all happy. If you're really concerned about it, you can run jumper leads if you feel as though the corrosion has gotten so bad to the point uh, you can also heat the board and slather it in solder too I'm kind of doing this as a way to prevent the spread of corrosion I could reseal this board in like epoxy or something but And then I'll clean all the excess off. And the wick will take the whatever's left on the board along with the uh, solder and the rosin. Not really necessary to do this, it's more of an OCD thing for me. So the flux that's left there will kind of seal up the board. So now I'm going to take my capacitor, make sure the polarity is correct. It is marked here. And the polarity is such that this is the positive and this is the negative. And I'm going to have to hold this here while I apply the solder. And that's just to tack solder it in there to hold it. Alrighty. And we'll do a couple of these connections here that got affected by the uh, nasties. If you find that they're not cooperating to take solder, remove the old solder first. Dookie. Probably somebody here a half hour before their appointment. Okay, so when your new solder doesn't want to take, then we have to look at jumpers. Ah, see, that's interesting. I don't know if you can see that as I move it, but this foil trace is not adhered to the board. It's come loose slightly. So I'm scraping this lead, and we're going to attach a jumper. 
across the damaged part of the board. Had to pause the camera there for a bit. <laughs> of course, nothing's going to work right now. See, I had wondered earlier if that was a questionable connection. So I'm going to attach it here, top. Gonna bend that lead up to touch it. Oop, bumping that. Solder to that lead. And then solder this to the board over here. Okay. And now let's ohm that out again. Okay, we're good there. So let's go ahead and put the board back down. Oh, before I do that though, let's uh, deox some of these pots and switches here and it's hard to kind of hard to see from where my vantage is so let's get our can of deox spray some in there and there and there And over here. And then we'll just work these controls a bit. This is the exciting part. Ooh, presence. Okay. The speaker switch over here, which is off camera, is actually connected to the back of the machine. Uh, so we'll get at that in a little bit. But right now I'm more concerned with putting the board back. Get this up a little. Okay, better viewpoint there. Let's go ahead and put this back together. Okay, got my screwdriver. Uh, before I get too far ahead, let's check and see if this potentiometer survived. Measures 25K, that's pretty precise. It's a little dirty there. Let's give it a spritz. Work it a bit, assuming I can find the correct tool. OK. 
Okay, let's check it again. Everything's getting in my way right now. You got five ohms there. Can't get a good connection on this crusty surface. There's 23K there, so that's pretty non-linear. So when we go to adjust that, we'll see if it behaves, and if not, we may have to replace that pot. Maybe that the damage has been done. So I'm just going to reconnect this stuff. Then we'll turn it on and take the voltage across the battery and see if the battery charges up and holds a charge. The connectors are numbered. They have little numbers on the front and they do correspond to numbers on the board so that's going to make it a lot easier. So we're all hooked up. Let's just tighten this down for certain. Tighten this down. And then finally this. And we'll set this to volts. We'll see if there's any current charge on the battery. I don't think there should be. Oh, somebody charged this up, so it's at 3.79. All right, so let's plug this in and do a quick memory test to see if it'll hold on to the stations. All right, let's power on. Comes out of protect, that's good. So we're on 500 AM, and it's going to do its auto seek thing. Let's see, how do we turn this off again? Oh, that's your FM receive mode. All right, let's hook up an antenna, but it's not tuning on uh, automatic. And I don't honestly remember how to turn that off. Okay, let's put an antenna wire on it of some kind and see if that makes it behave a little better. Then it's hooked up. There we go. It found my uh, found my signal generator. Station lock. No FM stereo though. Okay. Preset station. Holy drift o -matic. Oh, stupid me. I didn't hit memory first. I have to look and feel like an idiot. And it's not locking on anything. See that? All right, so memory. Okay, it held it. All right, now we'll go to a uh, test generator. It's going to hold that, and we'll put that on too. Okay. Find another random station here. All right, 
right, so we've got three presets. All right, let's turn it off. Let's unplug it for a bit. And so while I'm waiting for all that, we can uh, continue to clean the uh, switches and controls on this thing. So here at the back of the machine, this is the actual speaker selector, which connects via a ribbon to the front down here. So we're just going to get some deox in here and then work this guy. pretty good and then up in here it's gonna be hard to see, see if I can stick this in here turn on some light let's see who is the switch for that well they go back here too stupid me back so this is your I believe your input selector yep and I just hose them nope that's your tape monitor okay so tape monitor Do the one back here. That should be the input selector. Assuming I can get some cleaner inside of it. And again, I'm just hitting this from the front panel. So I'm working these. volume control up here has little vent ports in the side that's where you get your deox in there okay and just work in back and forth There's two more controls here. There's your balance and your variable loudness. And let me get the camera here and I'll show you where to put that in unless you want to take this other board out. If you don't mind taking this board out, you can get to it. But if you peer down in here, we can see that that control is staring at us there. And the other one, you know, it's hard to see with all this stuff in the way. The other one is down behind that ribbon you can see that back there so if you've got the extension straw you can just feed the extension straw in there get that one and then get the one back here yeah it's hard to see it really is hard to see And then just work these guys back and forth a bunch. Get them all cleaned up. Okay. That's going to be that. Uh, these two things here, this is your tuner and your phono bypass. So make sure them switches are clean too. You could just spritz them right inside the lock there and then work them a bunch. Okay. That seems happy. 
these ones over here for tape one, tape two. See, I thought the rotary thing was the input selector, but it's actually the record out, so I'm just talking out my butt again. It's been a while since I've worked on one of these, and normally most of this stuff is muscle memory. I work anywhere from 14 to 20 machines a week, so. Okay, so we'll go to auxiliary. All right, uh, let's focus now on the regulated power supply portions. Uh, we're going to find these capacitors on the bottom, mark them and check them. And obviously the Matsushita ones that are leaky are going to go bye-bye. And then uh, we'll take care of some soldering too. Okie dokie, so you can see I've got the electrolytics marked here. Let's go grab the ESR meter and check them real quick. All right, let's zoom out. Not sure how well this is going to work, but we'll certainly find out. Okay. So the ones that were peeing are definitely bad. Those ones are still good. Alright, I think we did this one. Okay, so those are happy. Let's go ahead and desolder these two guys. And Yank them out. Okay, so we've got this guy here. These are both 47 and 35. Yankee, Yankee. Yeah, nice crusty. Alrighty, and these go in. Alright, solder them up. Okay, trim our leads. Okay, now we need to get to resoldering the board. And I'm just going to pretty much do the ICs and the regulators and anything else that needs it here. Uh, so we'll do that and then come back to this. Alright, so we got the board all cleaned up and resoldered. See our happy soldering here on the ICs. All the jacks on the back have been redone. Tuner board's been gone over. Regulators have been gone over. So let's hook it up and test it. Okay, now that's had enough chance to sit. Let's see if our tuner memory holds. It does. Wonderful. Okay. Let's go to auxiliary and let's see what our scope looks like. Get this out of the way. Upside of. Looks pretty good. Bring it up to clipping. Back it off a smidge. A little bit more. All right, that's our max there. 
see how much that is. The uh, meter. Thirty-six seventy-five. It's like a hundred and fifty watts. Let's see how much that is. Do 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 do. All right, so thirty-six seventy-five squared divided by the resistive load. So that's one hundred and sixty-eight watts. Pretty good. It's healthy. Let's see if we can tweak the tuner a little bit. Okay. So back to the tuner. Okay. Berlin. Yeah. Let's see. I still don't have any station lock. I did have stereo earlier. Just check something here real quick. Yeah, no, uh, no stereo reception. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is check the IF level, and I'll show you how to do that on this one. It's without needing complicated service manual stuff. Okay, so here's our FMIF strip, and you want to take a sample of the IF signal with your scope right at the output of the first filter. And let me see what you're going to be looking at. So this is your signal from the output, and watch what happens when I go to the output of the first filter here. That's what you're going to see at your 10.7 right there. As I raise and lower the signal generator, you can see that it gets bigger and smaller. So the first thing you want to do is adjust the RF slugs in the tuner to peak that, which is what we're going to do right now. We can see that change in there pretty close to what it should be. It's a little better. Pretty much no change there. Last one, assuming I can get to the adjustment. That one was way out. Alright, here we go. So that's Now we can go back to the audio signal. And turn on our pilot. Still no FM stereo. Alright, so let's look to the multiplex. So this is the output of our IF. Here's your detector transformers. And then over here is your multiplex. You want to make sure the detector is aligned properly first. If you don't have a signal generator and a scope to do that, we're kind of going to skip over that one because that's advanced. But I'm going to dial that in and then we'll adjust the multiplex voltage control oscillator to see if we can bring back the stereo. Control is pretty touchy. Uh, 
That's your voltage control oscillator for the uh, multiplex. There we go. Okay. We got the right channel, and we got the left channel. We got both. So that's happy. This thing is just drifting everywhere. Let's see if I can't make a tweak on the detector. There we go, much better. And let's see if it'll go off and find it again. Yep. It's not finding that. There we go, just had to switch it to DX mode. Okay. So far it's finding all the locals. Ooh, even the crummy uh, low power station there, although you got to turn the muting off for it. Okay. Pretty awesome. All right, I think this thing's happy. Ready to go back together. Oh, someone's hanging out there on the call screen forever. Yeah, you can tell that they're having trouble with it. Where do I find that? On your keyboard. Oh. Is the cross hatch inside? The cross hatch inside. Oh. There we go. Alright. So this thing's happy ready to go back to its owner everything on it's working I tested the uh, tape and phono input and everything on it's just working great so uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching this little service video uh, more stuff to come when I get time to tackle the Admiral some more thanks for watching